Pinky here. Today we're going to add lots of colourful bouncing balls. So let's get started. First we need to create a class to represent a ball. Later we can use this class to create lots of ball objects. Let's create an empty constructor. We will populate it soon. We will give the ball class a draw method so that it can draw itself. And we'll need a global variable for the ball. We will create the ball object in the setup function. And now let's call the draw method for our ball object. Cool! Everything looks the same, but we're making progress. Now let's give our ball some features. We will start by adding some parameters to the constructor. Each ball has an X and Y position and a speed. And we will give each ball its own gravity constant so that we can make each ball fall differently. And I forgot about size. Okay, now let's use these parameter values in our draw method. And we will update the code for creating the ball to pass in the required parameter values. The comments aren't necessary, but they help us identify the parameters we are setting. And let's move all these ball calculations to the ball class. We'll need to update this code to use the ball property values. The start, the start, the start, the start. This refers to the current object. So we can reference the current object's property values by typing the start. And save to test. That looks good. Now we can add a loop so that we can create lots of balls. Let's declare an array to store the balls. And we'll add a for loop here to create the balls. But for now we'll just loop once so that we can create one ball. So we've created a new ball in this loop and now we'll push it into the array. Next, we'll draw each ball stored in the array. And test. Okay, that looks good. Now we're ready to create lots of balls. So let's add a variable called numballs. Save. The animation looks the same even though we're drawing 10 balls. That's because we're drawing balls on top of each other and they all have exactly the same parameter values. So they look and behave the same. Let's fix that by giving each ball a random x value. We'll need to take the radius into account, which is size divided by 2, so that none of the balls are cut off by the left and right edges of the canvas. Great! Now we can see the different balls. But we can also see the border of the balls. I prefer to remove this by using no stroke. Fantastic! Now let's give each ball a random gravity so that they fall differently and a random x value. For gravity, we'll use a random value between 0 0.3 and 0 0.7. 
And for the starting y value, we'll use a value between minus 200 and 200. This means that half of the balls will start above the top edge of the canvas. And let's make the balls smaller. I've changed the size to 20, and that looks pretty cool. Now we're ready to add colours. Let's update the ball class to accept a colour value. And we'll use this input colour instead of hard coding yellow. Now let's pass in a random colour. We can do this by mixing a random amount of red, green and blue. Save. Fantastic! That looks much better. We're almost done. Now, let's go crazy. Instead of using 10 balls, let's use 200. And save. That looks amazing. 200 colorful bouncing balls. Great. And that's it. We're done for now. See you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.